Dweebcast. Hey guys, I'm Andy Reesmeyer. Welcome back to Dweebcast. All right, it's that time of the year, you guys, when we join hands as one, come up with reasons to skip the gym and eat our weight in cookie dough, when we take copious amounts of mind-altering substances to deal with forced interactions with relatives, when we look back at the triumphs and failures of a year gone by. It was to be a year of splendor. With all the films coming out, how did they stack up? Here's our superhero movie power rankings for 2013. The Wolverine. Yeah, this one's kind of let us down ever since Darren Aronofsky bailed on it for that Noah movie. But the Wolverine had a bunch of great elements. Logan fights on trains in Tokyo. He loses his healing factor. Effing ninjas. We've seen Wolverine on screen long enough to really know what to expect from him when things get real. And it feels like Hugh Jackman's really perfected Logan's fighting style by now. Yeah, sure, he's got the whole feral berserker thing going on for him, but I don't know, it seems like there's a certain, there's a certain elegance to the way he stabbed the hell out of the throngs of nameless bad guys. But that bonkers third act just felt like it was from a whole different movie and not in a good way. And were we all alone feeling like including the deleted scene at the end showing the Wolverine costume could have atoned for the weird as hell ending? I think not. Kick-Ass 2. We loved everything about Kick-Ass. We wanted the sequel to take the over-the-top craziness of the first movie and push it to a whole nother level. And with the promise of a huge DIY superhero street fight, it should have been absolutely crazy. Problem is, it just kind of wasn't. The ultra-violence and shit talking all felt very familiar this time around, and none of it really pushed the envelope as much as we wanted. Plus, it was just more fun to watch Chloe Moretz waste a room full of gangsters as a little kid. She's growing up now which is great for her as a person, less good for her as a character like Hit Girl. Kick-Ass 2 did have redeeming moments, though we realized that loving this six stick scene essentially makes us all 12 year olds, which if you haven't realized that already from watching the show, well then, wake up. Man of Steel. Superman's return to the big screen was one of the most anticipated films of the year. The gargantuan spectacle was manly, alien, and blow your hair off your fucking head intense. In my mind, the entire movie's just like one big collapsing skyscraper. Totally not a metaphor. But we did get some of the coolest big screen superhero fighting we've ever seen. Should set the bar for super powered beatdowns from here on out. Let's just hope fewer innocent civilians die horrible deaths the next time around. Extra points for Christopher Maloney, who often goes undeservedly forgotten. Yeah, you had an unrealized Lois Lane who's immune to the power of black holes and an ending that is just straight up bullshit. But it's good to see Soup's back in movies where he belongs. Let's hope the next one is even better. Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 showed us just how effed up in the head Tony Stark got at the end of Avengers. He got his house blown up, he lost his armor, and he had to somehow fight his way back against extremist laden super terror. For the most part, the movie was pretty good. Some cool action, we actually thought the whole Ben Kingsley Mandarin story twist was pretty funny. The big fight at the end was just super generic, felt like they just tossed everything they could think of into it, and just felt like kind of a big mess. But the humor really saved this one. We love Jon Favreau's Iron Man movies, but replacing him with RDJ collaborator Shane Black was a master stroke on Marvel's part. Iron Man 3 isn't the best Iron Man movie by a long shot, but it's definitely the funniest. Thor The Dark World. We weren't expecting a whole lot from the Thor sequel, a solid space story maybe. Maybe some romancing with Mama Skywalker. But Thor The Dark World really delivered. He had to deal with a threat on par with the Shatari invasion in Avengers all by himself. Anyone else? The evil space elves were pretty creepish, and that big final fight with Malekith rivaled the big Superman Zod scene. And Loki, you guys, Loki. Best part of the movie by far. Tom Hiddleston just chews up and spits out every scene he's in. Without Loki, Thor The Dark World is middle of the road, probably forgotten movie about a superpowered space god defending Earth from aliens. Because of Loki, it was the best superhero movie of the year. How do you rank this year's superhero movies? Let us know in the comments right down there. And that's it for us today. Be sure to subscribe to the old YouTube channel. I'm Andy Reesmeyer. This is Dweebcast. Hey, tell Santa I'll be waiting for him. And this year, I'll be ready. Dweebcast.